Hello, how are you? We're back again, or I'm back again. I'm, it's so lovely to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Because I do make an effort every time with these videos. Believe it or not, it takes quite a bit of pre-planning. Okay, so today I'm going to be speaking about horse hair brushes. And I'm going to, for lathering, so this is a lather lab, and today I'm using Londinium from Signature Soaps, which is just limes, okay? Limes, essential oils, shaving soap. I'm going to be using it straight out the tub today. Um, right, there will be, there's a photo on the front, well, you've seen the photo on the front of this video, which is the collection of the horse hair brushes. Actually, there's one more, but that's on loan right now. So I haven't got that one to show, but it is essentially the same. And I will tell you essentially the same as which one. So most of them come actually from the company Vlong. It's a Spanish company in, in Valencia, which has been making these now for the third generation. Okay, so this one is the brown horse hair um, V-Long brush and the brown horse hair is called El Andalou or La Andal the Andalusian. Why? Because the Andalusian horses are brown. You get varying shades of brown. Some are almost black. Okay, when it's um, you can call this shade more like La Española, yeah, because this is still a rather light brown. And this brush is um, this brush is like one third one third mane hair and two thirds tail hair. Why is that so important? Because the mane hair gives the backbone to the brush. So you can see this is dry and so that's just the quick talk of this. All horse hair as far as I know actually comes from Spain even if you buy it from, let's say, Umo, I think it all comes from Spain, as far as I know. If I'm not right, please correct me below. But when I asked the last time, I asked Umo where do they source their horse hair from, they said they actually source it from Spain. So I'm guessing it is in the same region. Right, so this is... La Española, let's call it that way because it's the light brown. El Andalou is very dark. And that's the dogs kicking off. Excuse me. So I've decided to sit down a little bit. So let's get on to the next brush. I'm going to introduce every brush on its own before we get into the lathering and I'm going to talk a little bit about horse hair care and so on after. So this now is this lot um, I bought from Umo and the other one that is missing that I haven't got here right now is also an Umo. Um, now don't quote me on the on the millimeters but I think this was a 22 millimeter and this is a 24 or 26 I can't remember um, but in this case I will put it onto the video so that you know so this is an Umo horse hair and as you see this is an even lighter brown um, and this is a lot softer, so this has more tail than it has mane. It hasn't got the same backbone. In fact, it is, you will see when we do the lava test, it is rather floppy. I am not sure it has any mane tail in here whatsoever. Mane in here whatsoever. This is a pure painter. Okay, then the next 
uh, V-long brush I got is this one. It's also a pure horse hair. Um, this V-long brush is only available through executive shaving. I have not seen it anywhere else. And this is the white horse hair. And this is called the Lippy Sun. This is from the Lippy Sun horse because they are um, in shades of light grey right through to white and silver white. So this is the Lippy Sun and this is also pure horse hair as I just said but this has actually quite a bit of backbone so the percentage of the mane there will be a percentage of mane in here I think um, we will see it is pretty close to the brown one although no the brown one has a little bit more backbone than this one so the percentage of this mane hair in this is uh, most probably a bit larger than in the pure horse hair. This is obviously a resin handle. This is a wooden handle. This one is a resin handle. So these three in shades of lightness are all pure horse hair. All of these three. As I said, this one came from Executive Shaving. This one from Umo and this one actually from V-Long. Right, then we have another V-Long brush. Okay, and this is a sm the smallest brush I, not the smallest I have, actually it is 19 millimeters. I do know that because it's under 20. This has a I must say the only thing I'm worried about with this brush is actually this handle. I think at some stage I am going to have to um, either recoat this if I want the label still to be showing or I'm going to have to sand it down and treat it with... Um, what do I, I normally use linseed oil or with beeswax or something like that because this brush um, is made a little bit more on the cheap side um, and this wears off rather quick and it's maybe not 100% protected either so and that's what I'm going to have to do but why is why is this brush mentioned separately because this is a mixture of horse hair and boar okay so this has a lot of backbone and it is a lot more scrubby but not as scrubby as a pure boar brush and it is a little workhorse literally it picks up so nicely it is a real treat this brush I know it looks fairly hard and it's not really um, worn in, what you, I keep forgetting what it's called, broken in yet as you can see it's been used a few times but not really broken in yet but it's getting there. So this will get quite a nice uh, texture once it has broken in fully. So. Don't dismiss these. If you want something softer than a boar, but with the backbone of a boar, then use this. This is a mixture of uh, mane and boar. And then the last one I have is also a V-Long with a resin handle. This one is a mixture as well of badger and horsehair. But this mixture is a mixture of tail and badger. So it is a lot softer than a pure badger, but not as hard as mane hair. Um, so it has backbone and it responds really well. 
and there you can see it in its dry state same applies with this one this one hasn't been broken in fully yet either now let me just say something to horse hair brushes whilst I'm on the subject of breaking in don't break them in as you would with a boar or a pure badger horse hair can get entangled back a really easy if you don't pay attention the more tail you tail or the softer the brush is, the more tail hair you have in the brush excuse me I'm going to have to sneeze <laughs> the more tail you have in a brush the softer it is like this one the easier it gets tangled okay so how do you break in a brush like this and how do you make sure that it doesn't get tangled without having to comb it and do all the faffing around that you don't want to do you just want to enjoy it and use it really so what I do is when I first get the knot I get some I heat up some water in the kettle or if you've got a tap that's got really hot water then I take the knot and dip it in as it is like this in a glass let's say it's this glass okay then I put put the water up to about here so that it doesn't hit the edge just up to here because it will soak up a lot of water then I add best a, a cream a shaving cream such as Old Spice now anything that's a cream I add a small dollop to the water and then I go round and round just like that okay I'm not I'm not really touching the bottom of the glass I'm just stirring that around and I will leave it in there for a couple of hours right after you will notice that that brush will smell Ugh. it will smell really bad and it the water will be so brown it's unreal um, that's just the natural sebum of the horse that's what happens even if the companies have washed it prior to the hair it this will still happen to a certain extent unless they have stripped the hair with bleaches or something like that okay um, so it's actually a good sign so then once the water is cooled down I chuck it out and repeat the process okay so I'm not brushing anything I'm not sticking it in the fridge I'm using hot water and I'm just laying it in there and I'm just stirring the the shaving cream right after I have done that procedure twice or three times depending on how brown that water is then I will rinse underneath the running water and this time it's cold water I will rinse the brush just by going like that letting the water come down turning it like that not like this just this way water's coming from here and then I will just squeeze it out in its direction like that now here's an extra step you can do if you wish to do so I have found that the smell goes away quicker if you do do it I take a shampoo and you know I use the aloe shampoo I use this one because of this ingredient the jojoba now jojoba is a very gentle cleanser very gentle and very efficient cleanser so that is why I use that one and then I put some into my hand the shampoo and this is the first time I will wash the brush like this gently and slowly and just turning the brush not like that just up and down painting and turning it ok 
okay, like that. And then once I notice it has picked up all of that, I will dip the brush into some more water and then gently, in big gentle circles, go like this. Okay, until it's lathered up. Get some more water, lather it up, rinse it out. Then back to the hot water, get some more hot water and put it back into the hot water for another couple of hours. And then rinse it out, hang it up to dry. So I do not go like this. Do not do this with a pure hair a horse hair brush. Do not go like this when it's wet, okay? Don't, <laughs> don't go like that, not with the pure one. Um, should you do that on, on your face once it's broken in, then you will have to get a comb, a fine tooth comb and brush it out when cleaning because that will that will not up the pure horse uh, horse tail brushes. The softer they are, the easier they not. Otherwise, you'll end up having to take a toothpick or something and and knotting the the center. That's where it most mainly happens is in the center. So you don't want to do that. Um, the smell will go after maybe two or three uses. This one still has a tiny bit, but it's, it's hardly noticeable. And um, it's every now and then, depending on the hot water, um, there might be still a little bit more of the horse's oil coming off here, but not so much anymore. It's really bearable. It just smells natural now. Okay. Um, this one, which has a combination of mane and tail, which has a bit of backbone, with this one you can be a tiny bit more, a you can do more scrubbing action, alright? So this one should be okay. Same applies to this one, which has the combination of both. Um, Sometimes I they hardly ever shed, but what happens is because it's so fine, sometimes you can see this, <laughs> you'll get the odd hair that is really sticking out. If that disturbs you at some stage, just cut it off. And what you will also find it will look here on the edges because this hair is so fine, you will get you know curls. Can you see that? curls like that. Okay, you see that? Now you can see it. Okay, so it will look a bit more scruffy on the edges. Um, yeah, so but the mixture of badger and boar, these two are a lot easier to handle. Um, you use them as if it were a badger or a horsehair. Horsehair keeps the heat when you put it into hot water, it will keep the heat. Same as will keep the cold if you dip it into cold water. You need soaking them before using as well. Same as the boar and the badger, same thing applies. So you treat them basically in the same way. Okay, so that was a bit of instructions. Oh yes, if you do, unfortunately, tangle up one of your brushes then what you do is just take a conditioner okay when I say conditioner I'm talking hair conditioning okay just use a conditioner get it well into there <clears throat> get it well into there let it soak in warm water with the conditioner um, and then you'll have to gently comb it out or use a toothpick as I said if it's really bad but normally the hair conditioner will do the job do not do not never ever ever use a hair conditioner 
or a shampoo with silicones in it. You will ruin your brush and you'll ruin your hair as well, by the way. But mm, that's up to you. With your own hair, you can cut it off. But you'll definitely ruin your brush. So never, ever, ever use a, a shampoo or conditioner that contains silicones in. It'll be on the inscription with something with cone, anything that's got a cone in it. Something, something, cone, that's a silicone. Do not use it. So let me just pause the video here and let me soak the brushes and then we'll get on to the lathering. How I'm going to soak these, I have at the moment no idea because I've forgotten that I have to soak them all at the same time. Let me just get something that's big enough. Okay, here we go. I've not had this in very long, but this should be enough. So I'll start off with the one that I've broken in the most, if you like. I've just had it and I'm squeezing it out. And because this is a little tub, I am just going to hold it close and get it picking up to pick up. And this is all right because as you see, it's not going to make knots. It's going to be fine because I'm holding it tight. All I'm doing is I'm picking up the soap. Right, now I'm dipping it into some water. And let's go. You see, this is a painter. And you will notice in the beginning if there's quite a lot of horse hair sebum still in it then it won't pick up as well then the soap itself will not lather as well so that's another thing why you have to break in horse hair brushes they just need to be rinsed and cleaned a few times um, so just giving you the idea look at that you see I am going like that but rather gently and in big circles, not like that. You saw what the action that I don't, and you'll see what happens in the middle when you do do that. So let's just brush that out. Okay, so pure tail hair is definitely painter only. Do not even attempt And it also holds a lot of water, as you can see. Okay, so you might have to learn how to use this. It will take a learning curve. And it's happened to me still a few times that I have too much water in the brush. And then I have to go back into the soap to pick up some more. To make a really good lather. Okay, so I think this is most probably better as a bowl lathering. The pure horse tail is better to bowl lather than on the face, but you can try. I mean, I'm not I'm not a face latherer, so I haven't got a lot of practice with that. But there you see, it'll still take a little bit. You can still, can you see the color of this? It's not pure white. If I hold it up against like that, can you see that little bit of yellow still coming out? Well, this will happen still a few times. Um, so this is not completely broken and once that's gone, you know you have broken in the brush, okay? So I'll just show you with this one, this is how you rinse it out, and I know it's making water sounds. Okay, you squeeze it out and you shake it out. 
okay you don't go over a towel or anything like that that's the most you can do do not do more otherwise you will end up in a tangle and you can check it out whether you have a tangle or not because when shaking out it will it will show you immediately so that's the pure hair let's go to the other pure hair this one here this is the brown one this has got a this has got um, tail and mane hair so once again I'm doing the same trick I'm holding it up the brush yeah, like that so I can get the tips in to pick up same applies here you can already see this is not completely broken in this is slightly yellow in color and that doesn't come from the soap and you can see it is also not producing a lofty lather it's a creamy lather but it has more backbone you can see that now and you can see how it is producing quite a bit more than the former one because it does have that main hair in it as well so that's what gives it the scrubbiness which makes it a lot easier for a lofty lather okay and it tends not to hold quite as much water as the pure tail hair so the over wetting is less so okay you can see it still has a tinge of yellow here And it most probably would have been better if I'd used warm water, but I don't want to be sticking my hands into hot water every five minutes. There we go. Not practical for a video anyway. So that's the mixture, mane and tail. It has a bit of backbone, but not loads. shake it out I'll be shaking this out stronger now you can also see shaking it out how much more backbone this has okay can you see you can see straight away how much backbone this has compared to this this is a very low PI I'd say maybe a two uh, too low and this a two but medium because it does have a bit of backbone right the next one is also the pure one okay you, you can tell this has a little bit more tail in it because when I shake it out like that it got still quite a bit of water in it so let's do the pickup Can you see the pickup? It has picked up quite easy. And it has that mane, so you can see the lava is there, but this is a lot softer. It is actually from the softness in between the pure one and the brown one. And also in the stiffness it's in between um, and you can see how well this is actually producing a lather this hasn't got so it, the 
teeniest hint of yellow in it. Actually doesn't smell that much of horse either. So this has been well prepared to go to from the long this one. This has been washed a lot before it went for brush making. So you don't get that horsey smell with this one. You know, it's so slight, you, I think most noses won't be able to pick that up. And look at this lather. So you can see that's what a brush looks like once it's broken in. All of these will be able to produce a lather like this. This is almost broken in, just the tips aren't flaring out and that's about the only difference. They also, horse hair brushes dry fairly quickly, a lot quicker than boar and badger. This is holding quite a bit of water from the shaking, but not as, you know, it doesn't come out in one big floop as the pure soft one, pure tail. So that's what that one looks like, you can see how this almost looks gel tipped, doesn't it? Um, I have noticed looking at the differences of these brushes, these, these are all the same length hair in here and here. All of it is the same length apart from the shaping of the brush. They're all more or less the same height in here you get two heights and you can see that how shall i say there's shorter and there's longer and that will fan out so beautifully with this brush right let's go on to the boar next boar and horse that's this one also holds quite a lot of water. Let's get la picking up. You can notice the difference, this is just so much stiffer. Okay, let's get that on here. dip it into some water and this is working its socks off it's an ideal combination if you ask me if you don't want to have the ball to be so scritchy get the horse tail in there the ball is there's less ball in here than there is horse so that means it will get softer and softer, but not lose its backbone. Look at that. It's small, but it is a worker. And with this, I can dare to, you know, go like that. Okay, can you see? It's not knotting up. It's performing like a boar but a lot softer and a lot nicer than a boar, than most boars, let's say it that way around. Okay, you wouldn't get a performance like this from a boar on its second or third use. You'd have to really work at it and break it in. And this is super comfortable also for someone with sensitive skin. It has that little bit of scrub, but not too much. Tap, dripping. Hate it. There we go. So, 
there it is. You can see that the mixture there, you can see what that looks like. If you look into the side, into the side, into the middle. Yeah, I'm guessing this is main and bore. That's what I'm guessing. It didn't say on the description. They didn't know when I asked the company. I got this from Maguire's. Um, and I couldn't get hold of V-Long to give me a description of this in time. So, but I'm guessing from what I'm seeing here and what I'm feeling that this is main and bore. So it's on the scrubbier side. Superb little pickup, a great worker. Um, yeah, and soft enough for sensitive skin. Last one, but not least at all, is the Badger and Horse. As you see, you can hear it, quite, holds quite a bit of water, same as Badgers do, and Horse Hair anyway. From my initial feeling, this is most probably a mixture of mane, tail and badger because it's a lot softer than the, the, the boar and horse. And it's sort of, let me just go over this. It has a bit more backbone than this has, but on the same softness level as the V-Long, the, this one. Right, let's do some pickup. And there, it worked. It's already working its socks off. Smell, hardly any smell. Let's have a look. No tin, no, no tinge there whatsoever. So this has been cleaned well and that is why it's really working fabulously. The others need a bit more breaking in, then they also will work like this. But with this one you can scrub as you can see. Look, no knotting. No knotting whatsoever. Um, let me just see what it looks like once clean. This is super, super soft with quite a bit of backbone, not as much as the boar on a different level. Let's get some more of this water out. Holds quite a lot more water. Look at that. This does not look gel tipped. If anything, this looks almost like a pure badger, as in the black, you know. Wait, I'll pull one out the cupboard. Oh, where is it? Hello, where are you? Ah, here. Okay, before this one, before this one was broken in, that's what this one looked like. Can you see? So that's a pure badger, and this is badger and mane. I'm guessing this is badger and mane as well, because otherwise it would be way too soft, and this one has quite a bit of backbone. So this is a pure badger. And this one's already been broken in quite a bit. As you can see on the tips, they're almost there. There you go. Right. I hope that has helped you. Hello, here I am. I hope that has helped you somewhat to make your decision on whether you would maybe try a horse hair um, and also helped you in the care and looking after it. So, as I said, the pure ones like this one, 
pure tail is the softest. Those are the most difficult to look after because you need to be gentle with these. But all the others, this one is a mixture of mane and tail. This has enough backbone so it won't get knotted up that easy. All the others, same applies to this one. Yeah. Um, so there you go. All of them are in the price range between, let me think, what was the cheapest one here? In the price range of £15 through to £25. So that's the price range of all of these. None, none are above £25. So I think that's a good alternative if you don't want to go badger or boar. Um, then you can still take the pure mane and tail, the pure horse, or if you want to have a mixture and don't mind that much but want to have the backbone of a boar, then take this one. Um, because this is mane, I'm guessing this is mainly mane and a little bit of boar. And this one is mane and tail, and this is also, I'm guessing mainly mane because badger. Let me have a look at the texture once more of this hair. There's a lot more finer textured hair in here, so that'll be mane. So I'm guessing the higher percentage is mane in here as well. So Hope to see you soon. That was my lava lab on horse hair. Hope to see you soon. Missing you already. Bye bye.